I'll just make it a Oh yeah, okay. Ko told me we should wait for a bit, like he has uh, some technical issue, but I, I can start first. Uh, so let me like briefly introduce what is this work and what is we as like main author of this works do. So um, this is um, a joint work collaborated, uh, a joint collaboration between uh, basically folks, um, Mila, me, and uh, Ke at UCSD and uh, folks at Lion. So we jointly uh, collaborate on a uh, a um, initiative that uh, create a foundational model and as well as the data set for audio and language embedding. So we, we first, we recognize that uh, such contrastive model between one modality and language, for example, clip, is the um, crucial key foundation for the um, uh, for all sorts of uh, generation and sub uh, like downstream task as like clip enables all those like stable diffusion and uh, dolly etc so we want to do similar things for uh, audio and that's what we're at and uh could do figure out the uh, technical difficulties uh, can you hear me now Yes, yes, and uh, I will uh, stop. Do uh, you want me to share the screen, or you, you can share the screen? I will stop. I think the... you, can share, you can share the screen, okay. and I can okay. follow it with your clip. Yeah, sure. Okay, okay, cool. I mean, it's good scoring this video, yeah. Okay, sure. So, hello, everyone. Sorry for the technical issues. Uh, I'm Kirshen. Yeah, I'm sure, like, uh, you have already introduced. I'm from the University of California, San Diego. Now it's, like, fourth year PhD in music technology and computer science. Okay. So let's get started. Uh, yeah, please like click on that. Yes. So um, so this in this kind of project, what we do is that we build a contrastive language audio pretending, or we say CLI, and it is very similar to CLIP, which we call like contrastive language image pretending. So we contrast a model to combine the audio data with the natural language descriptions or textual descriptions. So in this kind of sense, like we have four challenges to build a CLIP. The first one is Clip uses many kind of billions of data in the web, in the public available website for the image and the language uh, uh, marking. But how can collect such data for audio? Or we say how we collect the you know, audio caption data with the related audio data. And the second challenge is that how to choose an audio encoder to encode the audio embeddings and how to choose the text encoder for the encode text embeddings. Basically, the encoder of audio and text are required to give the embedding, try to process the original audio and text data into some latent features and contain some dimensions. And these latent features can be um, can be like utilized to uh, match the correspondence of the semantic meanings inside this kind of dimension. And the third challenge is that uh, for many of like the image data, we actually have to fix size. For example, 256 times 256 or 384 times 384. But for audio or for many kind of like the streaming data, time series data, usually we'll have different kind of lengths. For example, sometimes you will have the audio ten, on 10 seconds, and sometimes you have the audio on 15 seconds or 20 seconds. How to deal with like the variable length input is the problem that specific design in, uh, in audio data, like or not in like the image data. And the fourth challenge will be how to evaluate the model. Like this will be the total kind of challenge and how we can resolve these kind of problems in our paper or in our project lab. Okay, next. So we first try to uh, mitigate, like try to address like the challenge of like the first problem is like how we collect the data set. So in this kind of project, we try to publish a data set called Lion Audio 36630K. It is a large scale audio data test set of like the three, uh, 633, 526 pairs. And we collect this data from eight public available data set. You can see uh, from the right figure, we have BBC sound effect, we have uh, Amphisonic, we have free sound, we have audio stock. All these are from some of website. We can just grab the audio from you know, that data set along with their descriptions. And there are different kind of durations of this website, which is marked on the right. And this is extremely larger than the existing data set. The existing data set of the audio caption and the related audio will only be like closer and audio caps. 
The closer is only about 37 hours, and all the cap is about like 150 hours. But now we can collect 633 and 526 pairs. It's actually about like, like thousands of hours we can use for chain data. And this is just the beginning, because this is technical data set we can collect actually from the website that, you know, they have a correct um, captions of the of the oil with the with this kind of this caption is correct. But the problem is that we have many kind of data in the in a music or audio platform like SoundCloud, YouTube, and other kind of like data set. This data content does not contain you know the caption, but they may have some tag. The tag means that they have some keywords to describe the this kind of audio. For example the genre of the music and the scenario for using this kind of audio and is the natural sound or not, something like that. And this kind of tag can be also used to perform the augmentation because uh, at that time we don't have ChatGPT, but now we actually have ChatGPT, which means that you can see we can have the something like the text augmentation model that you have the keyword and you try to augment it into the caption. This caption may not be 100 correct percent, 100 uh, percent correct to be the caption that mm -hmm. describing this audio, but they can try to enrich the text embeddings and data. They can try to produce some of like help for the training of the model. And we will see that how this can benefit the chain. So this is the data set we can have. You can scan this QR code to get the Lion Audio 630K or the more data set that can be found in that website. Yes, and this is the data set we use for training. Then after we got the data set, we can try to build the model, right? So the model contains two parts. The first part is the audio encoder to process the audio. And the next part is the text encoder to process the text. And for the audio encoder, we actually use two kinds of choice. It's, they are actually very famous, like the architectures choice in the audio classification. Like you input the audio, the model will output the class labels that this label indicates what kind of class it contains. It is a natural sound or it is like the uh, uh, different kind of events, uh, human human activities, or speech, or different kind of like parts. And there are two kind of models. Like the first one is called Pre-Chain Audio Neural Network. It's the relatively old model based on CNN. All all architecture of this PAN is, is CNN convolution neural networks. And then there's another model proposed by me, like last year, uh, two years ago, is a transformer architecture called XTSAD, the hierarchical. Uh, transformer for audio, and that would be the, uh, the main kind of audio encoder we use. But actually, we make some experiments right, to test this like, between these two models. So one model is PLN, a, a CNN-based model, and another model is HTSAT, a transform-based models. And t these models, even though these models are trying to design, are designed for the purpose of the uh, audio classification task. Mean, meaning that the end of the the end of the model and final final layer, it will output the uh, classification tokens, but we actually use the second last layer because they will try to provide, provide some audio embeddings in the second last layers that contains different kind of dimensions. For example, PNN contains 248 dimension and HTSAT contains the 70, 768 dimensions. We use this kind of embeddings we call audio embeddings that we can, you know, we can try to uh, to, uh, to to build the model that provides these audio embeddings and related with the text embedding, and we do the congested learning. So this is the audio encoder. And the text encoder is have three kind of choice. So we have the click transformer from OpenAI. We have the BERT from the uh, Google and you know, Meta. And we also have the Roberta. They are three kind of text encoder. So this text encoder will also try to persist the text, a text sentence, and they will output the embedding. They are namely top 12 dimensions, 76, 768 dimensions, and 768 dimensions, Roberta. And in the right figure, which shows that how we can use this audio encoder and text encoder to do the contrastive learning. Basically, you have the audio is 10 seconds or different like variable lengths, and you try to process this, this audio into the male spectrogram. And then you try to fit this male spectrogram into the audio encoder. The audio encoder will output in the dimension of the audio embedding. For example, 2040, 2048 dimension in PNN or 768 dimension in HTSAT. In the same time, the tech, you fit the text data into the text encoder. It will also try to output the text embedding. So now we have the audio embedding and text embedding. 
and then we process this old embedding and text embedding either into the MLP layer, the multi-layer perception layer. And this layer which tries to map the di different dimensions of the old embedding and text embedding into the same dimension. In our, in our case, it's called FAP12 dimension. So you have the FAP12 dimension for old embedding and FAP12 dimension for text embedding. You can see this embedding in the right figure as the matrix that we call EA1, EA2, EA3, and EAN for auto embedding, and ET1, ET2, ET3 to ETN as the text embedding. So each of the audio and text embedding are paired means that the EA1 is mapped to ET1. The most closest description of the first EA1 embedding is, is matched to the ET1. EA2 is matched to ET2, and EA3 is matched to ET3. So the, the pairs in the, in the di diagonal in the, in the matrix is the positive pair, which means that if you times the dot product or your computer cosine similarity between EA1 and ET1, that should be with the higher probability. Then you compare the EA1 to the other kind of text. So in each row of the matrix is that you try to try to like uh, times the first in all embedding with different position of the text embedding. And in each column, you have the first, you have the, uh, the specific text embedding times with the uh, different position of all embedding. But the diagonal pair is the, is the positive pair. Others will be like negative pair. So that's what we do in the contrastive learning. We need to make sure that in each row, the positive pair should have the, have the high probability, and in each column, they also should have a high probability, which means that the, the positive pair should be always the highest probability. That's what we construct our laws. You can see these laws have two terms. So for the first term, is for computing each probability of each row, and we assign the high, highest probability for the diagonal. And, and the second term is that we use the same way, but we compute each column. So then we can try to make sure that this loss is converged and we try to maximize the probability in diagonal, which means that we maximize the positive pair. This is the model architecture and how we do the congested pair. Any question here? Okay, so now for the old encoder, we know that we have PNN and HTSAT. So what is that? Specific architecture. So for the PNN, actually, what we use is the CNN layer. So we, you have the log mail spectral end, and you try to it, it, it has the size of the frequency times time frame, which is called f times t. And you try to fit this f times t data into the convolution layer. And there are 14 layers, and each layer contains the kernel size and the channel size. Basically, what you do is that you try to map the channel to be higher and higher from 1 to 64 to 1 to 28 to 256 to 2048. So this 2048 is at the end will be some like latent dimensions of like the, of your, uh, of your, uh, uh, all the input. But at the same time, because it's the convolution 2D layer, you're, you're actually doing a down sample, which means that your frequency and time resolution are smaller and smaller. Like it tries to, uh, try to like reduce this kind of like shape. And at the end, you will output the, embedding what we call like the uh, one times L is, is a latent feature that uh, after you process this you know, spectral into that into the series of the convolution to layer, it will open the one times L uh, latent features for this kind of audio. We call it like an audio embedding. And here L is equals to 2048 because the last layer of the channel will be 2048. So this is for PNN. In the right figure we have the HDSAT. The same kind of things here is that we have the log mail special one, f times t, but things like the transformer is the sequence model, the first one you need to plot it, plot it into the 1D sequence, which means that we need to follow a uh, order of the frequency. For example, we can, we can first follow the time, then follow the frequency, and then follow the window, and then we can try to build a 2D uh, patches into the 1D sequence, and that sequence will try to be the input in the transformer. And in a transformer, you just pass different blocks of transformer, and it is the hierarchical transformer, meaning that your input of each transform block will be downsampled by two, by four, by eight, by 16. And at the end, you will get the same resolution of what you can get the output of in your PNN, which will try to match this kind of like output to be the same. And also they will have the latent, uh, latent dimension 
and this second dimension is six, six, uh, 768, and then we use that as the features. So in PRN and HTSAT, we have both latent or uh, ordering values, and from PRN, ordering value is 2048 20, dimension, and from the HTSAT, is actually 768 dimension. But regardless of the dimension size, because we have the MP, MLP layer at the end, they will all map into the factor of that dimension. So HTSAT and PRN are actually from different papers that we show here. So you can get more details that, that you know, in these kind of papers, you can get more about it. Okay, that's not all the encoded. So here we have um, we have like the uh, we are clear about like what is what this kind of like encoded all encoded does in waveforms. Basically, we just send waveform into the model. We got mass spectrogram and we set into either PRM and XTSAP. Then we finish the embedding output. Okay, next page. Okay, so there was a question. So we talked about before. So how to deal with different lengths of audio? Because sometimes your audio are larger than 10 seconds, and sometimes your audio are less than 10 seconds. If we, if we make the 10 seconds as the enter threshold. So if you face the audio, you try to fit the audio less than 10 seconds, we just do the repeat and padding. Repeat means that if you try to, if you input the audio, which for example, are three seconds, we will first try to repeat it three times to be three, six, and nine seconds. And now you have one second left to be uh, 10 seconds. And then we add the padding. The padding is the zero padding uh, to, to you know, from the nine seconds to the 10 seconds. Then we got 10 seconds. For any of, of like the audio less than 10 seconds, we can use this kind of ways. We call it repeat plus pad, padding. And for you know, this will be it will be very easier because if the audio is smaller than 10 seconds, you can like they can be direct, directly fit into the PNN and the transformer. So we'll just do the padding and repeat. But for an audio larger than 10 seconds, this will be more complex. The reason is because like we need in a, in the first of like the perspective is that we need to preserve all information of the audio. Even though it is one minute, two minutes, or ten minutes, we need to preserve it. But sometimes we also try to capture some local features. Local feature meaning is that we have some uh, some kind of like span of this kind of audio that are very important that we can capture some features. So how do we do that? We can just preserve both scalable features and local features in the audio larger than 10 seconds. What we do is that we can try to divide the audio, audio features more than 10 seconds to be two parts. The first one will be global features. The global feature is, is actually done by resemble the audio into 10 seconds. So if, if the audio is actually uh, are less, uh, lasting about like 30 seconds, so to compress it into 10 seconds, we can try to use the three double three sample rate, or we can down sample into 10 seconds. This means that we can, uh, we try to, um, we try to uh, sacrifice the uh, the quality of the audio, but we can have like less, you know, less the less the origin. So each of the audio will be resampled to the 10 seconds. This is the global features. That's just something like we try to try to skip some point in the original audios, and then we make up a 10 seconds of audios. This will be served as the uh, global features. And for like the for the, for another part, we have the local features. The local feature is tries to randomly segment three three ten second pieces in this kind of like the thirty second audio or larger than ten seconds audio. And for example, we can try to crop some front information from the first beginning of the uh, of the thirty percent of like the of like the seconds of the audio, and then from the thirty percent to sixty percent, we can crop another ten seconds. Then from the 60% to 100%, we can actually have another 30 seconds, uh, another 10 seconds. So we have three pieces, three times 10 seconds, and plus the global 10 seconds. We have 40 seconds pieces. And in these 40 seconds, we try to fit all this 40 second data into the mid, in, into the middle spectrum one and to the conversion 2D, and we merge them to be two features. These two features are X, X global and X local. X global is some feature we output from the global 10 second features, and X local is actually we try to merge three times 10 second local features to be one 10 second features. And then we can try to fit into the attention feature fusion module. So basically, attention feature fusion is something like we try to add the X global and X local together with some weight. 
but are different from the fixed weight. This weight, this weight or ratio alpha is actually designed by the neural network. It's actually designed by your input and the model. So how this do is in the next page. So, so how we design like the ratio of the to, to merge the X global and the X local is something like we can try to input the X local and X global into two layer and we can add them together into two branches of the convolution 2D. One is the global affine pooling layer with the point-wise convolution with the value. Another one is the point-wise convolution with the value. And then we, we can connect together. And after all this kind of like the process, processing, we can got one, uh, one scale after the sycamore function. And this scale will be an alpha with times the x global. as like the ratio of the, of the x, x global. And then one minus alpha will be the ratio of the x local. So each of, when you try to fit each of the data into the model, the model will try to learn the network that will try to decide based on your input and how much ratio you will try to control in, in preserving the global features or preserving the local features. Then we can try to fuse this data into the input. And that input we call execution. It has the same kind of size in the original data without 10 seconds, like less than 10 seconds. Then we can follow the same kind of pipeline that we can try to input into the model to get only by, by a PNN or by HDSAT. That's all about like all the encoding. All right, so thanks Kua, for the first part of the presentation. All right, I'll, and I will go into the second part. And uh, the first part is more of a uh, overview in the modeling. So for the second part, of the, I, I will touch on the experiments and the data. So first, the uh, data. Yeah. Quick question before we go on. We have a few sure. questions in the chat. And I wonder if uh, before we go on, if we might uh, address, uh, really, I guess there's two questions from the chat. One of them, one of them is mine, uh, which is with respect to the uh, contrastive loss, um, do you guys have to worry much about the so-called problem of finding good uh, negatives? You know, a lot of times uh, the negative examples may not contribute much to the learning. And so various schemes have come up with ways to avoid the so-called hard negative mining. Is that something that you notice in your system? Uh, yes. So, um, so like, yeah, so when I talk about like finding the hard negatives, the I mentioned that, for example, in this kind of, the, uh, uh, kind of chain, what we do is that we try to maximize the probability in each row and column, but actually we do not expressly uh, minimize like you no know, negative loss because sometimes that negative pairs are not exactly negative because we just try to randomly select different batches of the data and we make the mapping of the positive pair and we left the left with and the left pair will be negative. Yes, this kind of problem also we think about is like when we try to design loss. So basically this loss as you show in this kind of like the uh, slide is in a click loss from OpenAI. So that's what, what the OpenAI trend for click. So we directly use that for training clock. And then, uh, but the, this kind of contrasting non loss is not usually in the traditional contrastive learning role. Uh, as you may know that the, contra the traditional contrastive learning or metric learning loss is actually the hinge loss or the, uh, the uh, like tries to, we, we try to build a distance and we try to minimize the distance between the next positive pairs, but we try to push away the negative pair. We also try to train this kind of channel model with such a loss, but we did not get a very good performance competing with the click loss. So we actually do some experiment, but we did not show that in in a in a in an ICAR. And we actually we have some meetings trying to use different loss. For example, not only using hinge loss, but using some addictive uh, ratio hinge loss, or uh, like we try to time some ratios, or we try to build some weight between how much the negative and the positive pairs are related. We can directly try to estimate it. But even though we try different kind of like ways, the click block are still seems to be a more generalized one. And one of the things I think about it because is because I think like some people from OpenAI are actually testing it. And like uh, maybe like they say like click block would be the best. And this is also happens in other cases. So in my in my view, what I'm thinking about is that the difference between the contrastive learning and metric learning is that 
contrastive learning usually tries to do the things in two kind of modality, like image and uh, audio or audio and uh, text. And which means that sometimes that if you try to restrain uh, or like constrain the negative pairs, and you might not seem to have much better performance than it, you try to only focus on like the positive pairs. And um, maybe like because like distribution different and shifting in different modalities. But yes, you know, like actually I continues to try to to, uh, to progress on this kind of problems because we think that maybe click loss is not only the best kind of option. So we are trying to do more. But till now that, no, it, it, it is still the best. Like the hinge loss is, cannot beat them. Yes. Cool. Thank you. Okay, one other question. This is from Zach. He said something yeah. I haven't understood. Why is it called attentional feature fusion when there is no attention? Okay, so can you, yeah. So actually, um, when we talk about like the attention, maybe people will know that the attention is transformer or self-attention layer or some other attention layer. But actually, attention, the word attention is not only do, it's not only down for the, the the transformer. So in the transformer, what we do is that we try to put the data into the sequence, and you we have the key, 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 key right, the query, key, and value. And all is coming from, in the self-attention layer, all is coming from the data itself. You use the data to get the key, you use this key to carry in the, to the carry and to do like, to get the value. So that we call the attention. The attention is doing that, how this kind of like the data, in the new sequence, how this, each of the token, each of the, in each of the past step of the new sequence, how it's related to different portions of the previous sequence. That we call the attention. But previously, in the CNN, we also have the term attention. Attention is means that you can send the data. Now you have X global and X local. And it's these two data and how you decide to fuse them. The fuse them means that you, how you add them together. So the basic idea is that you can add 5 point, 5 point. For example, 0.5 times X global and 0.5 times X local. So this is what we call residual net. Residual means that you can try to add the X global X, uh, X last, eight, last layer with the X current layer, it add together. This will be like the residual. So the tension here is that the alpha is not 0.5. It's actually getting by the data. You fit in X global and you use the X, X global and X local to go into this kind of neural network we show in the right. And then you can get the ratio. The ratio is directly estimated or computed by your input. For example, in this X global and X ratio, Alpha maybe is equals to 0.1, but in the other data is maybe is actually 0.6. So the tension of means here is that what is the tension of the x global in this in the, in, in this in this uh, fusion process? Sometimes it should be larger and sometimes it should be lower, but all is estimated by the network and based on your data. So that is called the tension. So this is also one of the form of the tension right before the transformer coming out. Yes. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I think that's it for our questions for now. Okay. So you still can go ahead. All right. So, um, so then there's, uh, like I said, there's um, a continue with the data. So as Kurt mentioned, we have collected a source of data, um, mostly from the web, which contains real uh, text description and uh, the audio relate with it, but um, those are not like ab in the absolute absolute sense. Those are, are not uh, very huge. So we have a uh, uh, previously very huge data set called audio set, which is basically uh, ten seconds of YouTube clip. Um, they have their taggings with them. Basically, um, the tagging uh, corresponding to the audio events happening in this ten seconds. So uh, one naive way is to combine those taggings and um, uh, form a text prompt uh, in a template-based manner. For example, like a sound of um, washing machine or like um, uh, like a car pass by, etc. However, those are if you if you form it in a template way, those are depth pen um, text you know pseudo text prompts. And um, it could be the case that um, the constructive model just um, focus only on the keywords and um, deteriorate to a keyword 
uh, contrastive learning model. So right. in this work, we also explore to uh, convert tags into a real text prompt using a, um, a text keyword to text uh, language model. Although, like currently, um, fast forward to now, your 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 best choice could be uh, GPT four or ChatGPT. Uh, or uh, some open source language, large language models. But at, at the time, this is the uh, best solutions that we got. So the uh, upside of this uh, method is that we now have um, sentences uh, like what human would read, uh, would, would write for, for this audio. But the downside of it is that the keywords is not enough to have, doesn't have the enough information to describe the audio. So the caption might not be correctly related to the audio. So um, there, there might be some like um, like gender uh, injected, although we, we, we correct them by changing like man or women to a person. Um, but we, uh, oh, this is, and, and he's or her, we uh, actually um, fix that in later uh, versions. But uh, this is, still injecting some information that is from the language model, but not from the audio. So uh, with that said, we uh, enter our experiment part that uh, we, for the first experiment is to uh, evaluate on the text audio retrieval task. So for the contrastive model, you basically train to give the best match of the corresponding that text in audio. So this is um, the most um, aligned task for this uh, model that's trained on. And uh, the definition is to given like some uh, text, we want to find in a candidate pool of candidate of audio, the best match of this test. So there, there are several um, uh, metric with it. Uh, I, will, I will show later. Uh, but the evaluation set we use is audio caps and closer, which is two um, very small, rather small academic data set. So uh, we kind of mostly evaluate those uh, the the retrieval task with mean average mean average precision at ten, which basically means that what is the rank uh, of the correct audio. Um, in 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 the top ten, so 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 basically, like, what is the average precision among uh, the top ten candidates, or, or you if you you rent upon uh, up to top ten, and for this uh, metric, the larger is better. So first, um, we tried with uh, different audio encoders, basically the PN. Uh, that's CN based audio encoder and the HCTS DT, which is the uh, transformer um, based audio encoder. And with no surprise, the uh, transformer outperformed the CN, although uh, this transformer I think has less parameter than the CN and, and uh, has less computational um, cost than the CN. Uh, then we try a different uh, set of three text encoders, as Ko mentioned. Uh, we tried a uh, clip transformer, the Bird and Roberta, and find that the Roberta performs actually the best. And one of the things that surprised us is this clip transformer actually performs very worse. So we uh, presume that uh, assume, assume that probably because you know, although like just having a transformer is generic. Um, this one either doesn't have, you know, we, we don't have the amount of data to make it work, or in, in audio case, this just, uh, actually we, we, we use the pre-trained clip transformer, so we, we just uh, use the off-the-shelf off clip and use their text transformer and load the pre-trained model. Uh, the same here for the Bird and Roberta. And um, so that means that this, Pure transformer is not really the, the the knowledge it learns is not really useful for the audio task. So this gives us a takeaways, which we actually uh, were hoping that we can build a you know a joint uh, model together with audio image and uh, text together by you know train upon a pre-trained clip. Then that that won't work. Yeah, like in reality probably things are more complicated and 
you cannot assume that okay one thing one knowledge or embedding feature space learn can easily adapt to the other modality so uh, another one is that we um after we we found the best uh setting of text and auto encoder we actually did a ablation test on data scale scale and data fusion so this is a very huge table i won't go through all the table here i will just give you some takeaways first um having uh, collected a lot of data set 6 630k actually improved the retrieval performance for sure and model with feature fusion improves overall retrieval performance and um Although I, I will I will I should mention that model with fusion have more parameters but just a little bit more. Um, so uh, I although with that side uh, with that said I will I will say it's more of the fusion that works, not the uh, the little more uh, parameters that works. Uh, and last we have um, compare with keyword to caption with the template based uh, uh, keyword to text and it outperforms than the template one so um then there are some downstream tags that we that we can um evaluate on uh, evaluate this model because um this model is built as a foundational model so people will use it as all sorts of downstream tasks other than this retrieval task and uh the, we, we tried two uh, downstream tasks. One is the zero-shot auto classification. The other one is supervised auto classification. So for zero-shot, it's kind of like clip. Uh, we basically uh, transform the label into a text using this is a sound of the label. For example, this is a sound of car passing by or this is a sound of dog, cat. And we just do... Uh, calculate the similarity between the text and audio and select the best, uh, highest text similarity as the label. And also we perform supervised audio classification. So this is more of like uh, audio encoder learning or like representational learning regime where you learn a pre-trained encoder and you want to fine tune them into sub, sub uh, downstream task, etc. So So this is just, we, uh, we add a projection layer and we just fine tune them. Um, and we found that for the zero shot uh, classification, we actually outperform uh, most of the data set. And then, um, and then for the supervised learning, we also have uh, on par results with the state of the art. So this means that, okay, this model really learns a gives us this gives us a side evidence that this model really learns a good representation that can be uh, leveraged for other uses uh, so finally um that's basically what we had for the experiments but i would like to also mention that for a foundational model we have a clip that are used to uh, all sorts of downstream tasks one example here is that uh, a cloud, sorry. One example clear is that um, recently a paper called Audio LDM uses the CLAP as the uh, the embedding provider for the text to audio uh, generation model. And there are, uh, as far as I know, Open um, Mulan or like Open Music LM, which use our CLAP as a replacement of the Mulan. So Thanks so much for um, your watching and also for your uh, listening. And um, here is the QR code of our code, uh, code base, our paper. And also we are having an API on PIP. So if you want to use our model in the Python environment, just uh, PIP install WineClub. And uh, there is an easy API you can easily call and to uh, get the... Uh, uh, audio and text embedding. So see more in the uh, code page. Thanks so much.